Hi, welcome. In today's tutorial, I'll take you through how to perform one-way ANOVA using SPSS and how to interpret your results. So without wasting much time, let's start. Now, ANOVA is an acronym for Analysis of Variance. Okay. And one-way ANOVA is used to determine whether there is any statistical significant difference between the means of three or more independent groups. To understand this better, let's look at the data I have here. So let's say we wish to try three different techniques to lower the blood pressure of individuals diagnosed with high blood pressure. Okay. Now to use one way and over, some assumptions must hold. Okay. And the first one is that the independent variable should have three or more independent groups. Okay. Now the techniques used is the independent variable. And then the reduced blood pressure is the dependent variable. The technique is the independent because the reduced blood pressure depends on the technique you use for that particular individual. Okay, so the technique is the independent variable. When you look at the techniques, okay, five individuals were placed on medication, another five individuals were allowed to take exercise, and then another five individuals were placed on diet. Okay, now group of those who are on medication is the first group. And then group of those one exercise is another group. And then group of those on diet is another group. So that is making it three independent groups. So this is what I mean by your independent variable should have three or more independent groups. Okay. So mine has three independent groups. Secondly, the dependent variable, which is the reduced blood pressure, should be on interval or ratio level of measurement. When I say interval or ratio level of measurement, I'm referring to the scale, okay? Interval or ratio level of measurement. Also, the dependent variable, which is the reduced blood pressure, should be approximately normally distributed for each group. This means that for the group of those on medication, their reduced blood pressure should be approximately normally distributed. And then for those who are on exercise, their reduced blood pressure should also be approximately normally distributed. And then those on diet also, their reduced blood pressure should also be approximately normally distributed. Also, you should have independent samples, okay? Also, you shouldn't have extreme high or low values, okay? Extreme high or low values are known as outliers. Okay? Now, before I show you how to analyze this data, let's look at something at the variable view. I click down here on the variable view. Now, when we come to the variable view, looking at the row for the techniques, Let's go to the values, okay? And then let's click on the values for techniques. You realize I've assigned the values 1 to medication, 2 exercise, and 3 to diet. And in one of our previous videos, I've explained how to define the properties of your variables. So that is what I want you to see over here. And also, you see that reduced blood pressure is on scale measure. I told you that when your variable is either on interval level of measurement or ratio level of measurement, you should make it scale. And then the technique is nominal. Now let's go back to the data view. Now when you come back to the data view, let's click on value labels and see something. Now when I click on the value labels at the top here, you see that medication has changed to 1, exercise to 2, and diet to 3. You can click on the value label back to convert it to its original form. Now to perform one way and over, first click on analyze. And then go down to compare means. Move your cursor to the right. And then move down to one way and over. Then click on it. The one way and over dialog box will display. First, you select the blood pressure, which is on a scale measurement. Okay. Click on this arrow to move it to the dependent list box here. Okay. After that, you also click on the independent variable. You click on the arrow at the down here to move it to the factor box also. You can click on OK to continue. But I want to go further in my explanation. Okay. So please come to where they've written post talk here and then click on it. After clicking on it, then select two key. After selecting the two key, check the significance level. The default significance level is 0.05. And I also want to use the 0.05. In case you want to use 0.01, just edit it to 0.01. Okay. Remember, 0.05 in percentage is 5%. So the significance level is 5%. And if your significance level is 5%, it means that your level of confidence is 95%. If your significance level is 1%, it means that your level of confidence is 99%. Okay. 
then click on continue you come to options then you click on it also now after clicking on options you can check the box for descriptive you can also check the box for homogeneity of variance tests you can also check the box for welch later i'll tell you the reason i made you check the following boxes okay. you can also check the box for means plot then you click continue after that you can click ok then spss will bring out this output the first table is the descriptive table okay now for medication the sample size is 5 and then the mean is 11.80 standard deviation is 2.387 and this is a standard error and then we have the 95 percent confidence interval for mean the table used 95 percent because we gave a level of significance of 5%. This is the lower band for the medication. This is the upper. And this is the minimum BP for those who take medication. And this is the maximum. When you also take exercise, same thing. When you take diet, same thing. Okay. Now, when you look at the means of the three groups, you will see that the mean of medication is different from the mean of exercise. And that of diet is also different from exercise. And that of diet is also different from medication. But researchers are not just interested in the mere difference you are seeing in the descriptives, but rather the hypothesis test. So before we look at the hypothesis test, let's set the null and alternate hypothesis. So the null hypothesis will say that the mean of the three groups are equal. Or you can say the mean of the three groups are not different. Okay. And then the alternate hypothesis will say that at least the mean of one group is different from the mean of the other groups. So, our decision will be to either reject or not to reject the null hypothesis. And if we reject the null hypothesis, it means we are supporting the alternate hypothesis. But if we do not reject the null hypothesis, it means we are rather going for the null hypothesis. So, before we do that, let's look at the table for the test of homogeneity of variances. We are going to use this to test whether the data follows the assumption of homogeneity of variances. Okay. Now, to do that, you are going to compare each p-value and the level of significance. Now, the rule is that if the p-value is less than the level of significance, your data has violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. But if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, then your data has not violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So, when you look at the p-value here, which is 0.689, this p-value is greater than the level of significance of 0.05. So since this p-value of 0.689 is greater than the level of significance of 0.05, then our data has not violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. Okay. Then let's go to the ANOVA table itself. Since our data has not violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances, then we are going to use the results in the ANOVA table to make our decision. Now, if our data had violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances, that is, if the p-value were less than 0 0.05, then we can use the results in the ANOVA table. Rather, we will use the Welch result here. Okay. You remember when we were making the selections at the options, I made you select Welch. But since our data has not violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances, we are using the result in the ANOVA table. So to use the ANOVA table to make our decision, you can decide to use a test statistic method or you can use the p-value method. But I want to use the p-value method. Now the rule is that if the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, you should reject the null hypothesis. But if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, you should not reject the null hypothesis. The p-value here is 0.004. And this p-value of 0.004 is less than the level of significance of 0.05. So since this p-value of 0.004 is less than the level of significance of 0.05, then our decision will be to reject the null hypothesis. So we are rejecting the null hypothesis which says the mean of the groups are equal. So since we are rejecting it, it means we are supporting the alternate hypothesis which says at least the mean of one of the group is different. Now, but when you look at the ANOVA, the ANOVA only tells us whether the mean of the groups are different or not. It doesn't tell us the exact one which is different among them. So, let's scroll down to the post hoc test, which is the multiple comparison. Now, we are looking at multiple comparisons. This multiple comparison is going to help us know the exact one which is different among them, okay? So, to do that, we are going to use the p-value provided here, okay? 
The rule is that if the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, then the mean are different. But if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, then the mean are not different. Okay. Now, remember, our level of significance is 0.05. So let's check the multiple comparison table well. Now, we call it multiple comparison because it takes medication separately and compare it with exercise and also compare it separately with diet. Later, it takes exercise and compare it with medication and also compare with diet separately. And then it takes diet also, compare with medication separately and with exercise separately. So let's look at the me medication first. Now, when we compare medication and exercise, now look at the p-value. The p-value is 0.003. Now, since this p-value of 0.003 is less than the level of significance of 0.05, it means that the means are different. So the mean of medication and exercise are statistically significantly different. And then let's look at the p-value of medication and diet. Now, when you look at the p-value, the p-value of medication and diet is 0.103, which is greater than the level of significance of 0.05. So, this means that the mean of medication and the mean of diet are not statistically significantly different. That's the meaning. And then let's look at exercise and medication. Exercise and medication, the p-value is 0.003, which is less than 0.05. So, it means that they are different. When you look at medication and exercise, remember that we say the means are different. So same thing is happening here, exercise and medication. Okay, medication and exercise is still the same as exercise and medication. So we end up making the same decision. Okay, so the mean of exercise and medication are statistically significantly different. Okay, then let's look at exercise and diet. Now, the p-value of exercise and diet is 0. 147 which is greater than the level of significance of 0.05 so this means that the mean of exercise and diet are not statistically significantly different okay then let's look at diet and medication also diet and medication the p-value is 0.103 which is greater than the significance of 0.05 so this means that the mean of diet and the, the mean of medication are not statistically significantly different okay then diet and exercise the p-value is 0.147 and this is greater than level of significance of 0.05 so this also means that the mean of diet and exercise are not statistically significantly different so in all we can summarize that medication and exercise are statistically significantly different but diet and medication are not statistically significantly different and also diet and exercise are not statistically significantly different. So the significant difference is just between medication and exercise. And then you can also use the mean plot to check, okay? So let's scroll down to the mean plot. This is the mean plot. Remember, I made you check the box for the mean plot and the options, okay? Now, to use the mean plot to check, when you look at the point for the medication, it is far away from the point for exercise. Okay, diet and medication are not really far from each other, and also diet and exercise are not really far. The medication and exercise are far away from each other. So this is another indication that medication and exercise are statistically significantly different from each other. So in the next tutorial, I'll take you through how to test for normality. So do well to subscribe to the channel so that whenever we post our tutorial videos, you can have access to them easily. Thank you.